Hello everybody and welcome back to RP1. And as you may be able to tell from the title, we are indeed starting again. I had spent quite a lot of time working on this next episode, playing around with this AJ-10 series. Uh, it actually has multiple ignitions, so I was looking forward to bringing that to the moon and potentially using it to circularize. Here I am playing around with it. Uh, never did get the chance to get the hang of it because this morning when I went to finish up, I decided to update one of my mods, which threw out my entire system out of whack. So, uh, unfortunately, we are going to be starting again the Legion Space Agency. This was in the plan already, but about two episodes from now, I was going to try to uh, orbit the moon, and then I decided I was going to continue that speedrun that I had done earlier. Uh, we were just going to go ahead and continue that save file, but unfortunately that save file is no longer viable either. So today we are just going to kind of speed through and rush. Uh, the goal is to complete an entire program uh, within the first few years uh, at breakneck speed. So we're just going to kind of go through this first day sort of situation. We selected material science as our first one. We are choosing early rocket development as breakneck speed. And I thought about waiting until our first contract to gain a little bit more reputation to also take suborbital research at breakneck speed. However, uh, it will take us a little bit to get started on that one. So today we're just going to focus on suborbital rocket development and get to the research rockets in the next one. So we are just going to blow through this first sounding rocket. However, the difference is we are going to be using the U-1250 that I had utilized in that speedrunning episode. Um, it was quite interesting. I was blown away by its performance, so I was actually really excited. Ever since I made that episode, I've been really excited to uh, play around with it again. Obviously, when I discovered it, I was in too late of a game for it to be of any use, but the amount of science that we unlocked right at the beginning, the amount of, uh, of a jump start that our program got was... Uh, too interesting to pass up. So, like I mentioned before, I was going to be restarting this series uh, into the next season uh, to try to utilize these engines to do uh, a faster uh, RP-1 run because we were already in the mid-60s and had yet to orbit the moon. But I feel like with the advantage that this engine and these designs... Uh, uh, do you see this? Do you see this bug? Brand new... Brand new save, not even just a brand new save file, but a whole brand new Kerbal folder, brand new CCAN, and yet the uh, <laughs> default wings from many, many games ago still persist. I don't know why, but there it is. But anyways, uh, we are going to be trying to make this as fast as possible because I want to see what it looks like when we can keep up with uh, a few more real world deadlines in this and uh, see if we can't beat them ourselves utilizing this better technology. The thing about restarting RP1 is you always learn as you go. Each new playthrough you learn a little bit more and you become just a little bit more efficient. And uh, so I was actually having a lot of fun. This happened this morning. Um, so all that footage that I had built up and saved and all those hours working on those rockets uh, unfortunately had to be thrown out the window and so I was on a little bit of a time crunch so I just kind of built uh, as best I could and uh, wanted to get through this early stuff pretty quickly. I'm going to focus on the building of this rocket and our first bumper rocket but un other than that we are just going to focus more on the launches and get through because I'm excited for the next episode to keep uh, to continue on with the program but with a little more uh, focus because today it was it was all about making as much progress as quickly as possible so as unfortunate as it is to start over it does give us a lot more opportunities uh, to do cool things and uh, I'm looking forward to that we are going to avoid the X-Planes in this uh, playthrough in this season. Uh, I had a lot of fun with them, but I feel like it's a lot of repetition. A lot of the flights end up looking the same, and it's hard to make them too different. I can uh, 
uh, replicate more real world designs, but that does take quite a lot of time and focus and research. So instead, I'm going to focus this playthrough solely on rockets, and we are going to try to make as much progress as quickly as possible and get back to the moon. Speaking of which, once again, RSS Reborn is in full effect, and we are now actually using the highest quality textures possible for Earth, Moon, and Mars. But anyways, let's go ahead and put out our first sounding rocket on the launch pad. Our first launch just requires us to go 100 kilometers into the air. We also have our first amount of science here. Follow the middle Tiny Tim. I've been really enjoying watching the discarded stages. Uh, I don't know why, it's just, it's really satisfying to me. Uh, just for me to see the uh, active part of the rocket flying away. But as you see here, we reached the thousand meters for the first launch. And the Carmen line, which is our second contract, of 100 kilometers, we are going to easily smash that uh, and uh, reach 172 kilometers. Which is going to be great because that means that this rocket is going to be usable for the next... Uh, contract without having to make any adjustments. So we got science from both high altitude as well as some science from space. So this has been quite a lucrative first launch. The fact that it can go uh, not only into space but it can be in space for a bit longer than just the bare minimum means that uh, the U-1250 really offers us a really good head start. So on the 4th of March 1951, a good solid two months and a week before the V2 number three was launched. So we are already on track to beating history, at least the first milestone. We shouldn't get ahead of ourselves, but now we have 6.8 science to spend. I'm going to jump immediately into post-war rocketry testing. Uh, like I mentioned, we're not doing X-planes, which is good because that saves us a whole 31 um, points of science that we're not going to have to use, so uh, that'll be good. We're going to also put into early tracking systems to get better avionics, and uh, we're also going to be putting into early rocketry as well to just immediately start pursuing better engines, because I feel like uh, with the better engines, we can more easily do our contracts. So today we're going to also be doing a few of the optional altitude sounding rockets uh, in order to build up some uh, reputation. Uh, here we are picking our first leader. We are going to go with Satish Dewan uh, for his science transmission. We, uh, I, it's pretty standard. I like having him early on to bonus, uh, uh, to boost our science bonus. But anyways, now it's just time to just adjust the sounding rocket that we had already put out into construction. And uh, we don't have to do much. All we got to do is add a parachute and a decoupler and that will be fine. But during this time, I'm going to take a second and we are going to build the second rocket of the episode, which is going to be our bumper, uh, which is basically the sounding rocket that we developed with the V2 uh, lookalike underneath. So we're going to go ahead and name this the SR2 because this has the updated uh, post-war material science as well as the post-war rocketry testing upgrades to the engine and the fuselage so uh, by the time we can work on this rocket hopefully we will have unlocked those technologies meaning that this will already be a more advanced uh, rocket than we are used to so now comes the time of picking the right engine i don't know what i want to go with but unfortunately well Fortunately or unfortunately, I go with the tried and true, the one that I always end up going with, which is the RD-100. Uh, and, you know, I feel like this is going to be another uh, playthrough where I end up leaning on the RD-108 and 107s, but we'll see. We'll see if we can uh, come up with different design uh, utilizing our different direction that we're going. But nonetheless, we are going to build out the bumper the way that I kind of like to. I like using this hollow cone uh, for the bottom. Sometimes uh, some people use uh, fairings to kind of uh, cover the engine bell, but I like to utilize the fuel tank itself in the design. So we just put a little hollow cone there uh, and let it taper. 
And uh, we're gonna have our avionics up top, but I don't like how big they end up getting when I try to make it aerodynamic like that. So we're actually going to remove the avionics, put it in the center, make it a cylinder again, and then have another fuel tank up top. Uh, we are eventually going to switch that over to uh, a service module so we can hold sounding, uh, sounding payload in there. But again, uh, after that later we will switch it back to the fuel tank. So this is basically going to be the design for the body. We do need to put a launch clamp on there before we'll be able to see our Delta V. Uh, and put our staging in the correct order, of course. The RD-100 or the RD-100 has a 60 second um, burn time, I believe. And we are, in these early stages, we are going to overburn a little bit in order to uh, maximize our efficiency. Uh, but we're gonna have to really play around with the Delta V later when we get down to the 3,000 and specifically the 5,000 kilometer downrange contract because uh, this one is not as overpowered as I'm used to building and uh, we really have to work for our contracts with this uh, design. Putting on some stabilizing fins and of course trying to get our center of lift and center of mass lined up. And that is the bumper rocket done. It's utilizing the most advanced technology that we will have by the time that it comes out. Uh, and uh, hopefully it will be able to solve our 3000 kilometer downrange contract. We're gonna get our avionics set up correctly. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a uh, ridiculous tilt onto it in a second, but uh, we don't end up keeping that. But I didn't bother finding the footage where we fixed it, but that tilt, don't worry about that. We're not going to do that. But anyways, it is time to get our second launch uh, underway. This is the sounding rocket one, but this uh, is our return rocket. So it's equipped with a parachute so we can hopefully get that avionics and the science back. Same exact rocket as before. No upgrades. In fact, we haven't even unlocked any of the science that we've spent this is uh, still very early on in the first year. And uh, we're making really good progress. I don't know, there's something about the journey that this piece goes on after it separates from the main focus. It's just a lot of fun. Might have to get FMRS, FMRS, FRMS, one of those. Might have to get one of those at some point. So with a successful touch into the, uh, past the Carmen line, actually we passed 140, the, the true Carmen line of real solar system. We go ahead and safely touch back, uh, touch down, splash down back into the water and we can recover our vessel, successfully completing that mission as well. Got 11.6 of science. We are gonna spend it in the early material science because I feel like lightening our craft, uh, not only having better engines, but lightening our craft is going to be, uh, is gonna behoove us. We only have 3.6 science left and most of what we wanna spend is four points. So we are gonna have to hold off on that. And instead we're gonna launch yet another high altitude rocket this one solves a contract that requires it to have sounding payload. Uh, I don't know why it curved off like that. It didn't do that in any of the tests. It didn't, you know, it, it never showed any kind of interest to curve off to the side, but we went with it, you know, as long as it can reach an altitude of 80 kilometers, there's no need to uh, make this uh, flight happen again couple seconds left and we've already burnt past the 80 kilometers in fact uh, we're at 114 which is almost good enough to solve the advanced high altitude contract but not quite there we go we solved that contract and we can go ahead and watch it come down but because of the fact that it decided to take off like a missile uh, rather than having it range safety and explode in midair we decided to let it be what it really wanted to be a ballistic missile Thankfully, it was just out in a field and only the cows were startled. 
But here we are, we now have access to better technology and uh, we can actually make the Bumper Rocket 1A before we even put out the Bumper Rocket 1. Uh, unfortunately, we spent all that time and money making the launch complex for it and we have just enough money to launch the rocket that rather than upgrading again and spending all that time, money, and uh, effort upgrading the launch complex a second time, we're just going to launch the, the lesser technology bumper rocket for the 3,000 kilometer downrange and we are going to focus uh, for better technology for the 5,000. So I actually probably could have unlocked uh, these uh, contra er, contracts? What we do is contracts, missions. We could have unlocked <laughs> these leaders, the contractors, contractors, I can't speak. Anyways, we could have unlocked these probably uh, a flight ago once we reached the Carmen line, but I didn't pay attention uh, and unfortunately we didn't. Uh, here I'm checking to see how long it's going to be until we get the isogrid tanks because I really like using them, but um, I don't know if it's worthwhile having um, a leader dealing with isogrid tanks if we're not going to use them for a while, but they're active for 3,652 days, so there's actually no harm in doing that. We're going to use them soon enough. So now the launch complex is ready for the bumper rockets, however, we barely have enough people working on it. Out of the 80 uh, maximum capacity that we have, we only have 25, now 29. So what we do is we're going to warp forward a little bit since we are in the positive for our budget and just hire as many people as we can, warp ahead a little bit faster and do that again. And it brings the completion of the rocket closer each time we do. So uh, we find a nice balance to get this out on April 7th, 1953. So unfortunately there were no launches in 1952 uh, because we had to spend that time getting the science together and getting launch pads uh, created, but it all paid off with the culmination of the Bumper Rocket 1 topped by the Sounding Rocket 2. I know, very cleverly named. Maybe we'll uh, come back uh, and do a little better this time. I'm uh, determined not to use the, <laughs> the gold bird, the gold brand, the gold anything. We're not going to go gold this time. We're going to go real uh, actual colors here, but with that separate uh, separation, clean ignition of our final stage is a little bit wobbly. Uh, the positioning that I put those Separatron motors could have been better. If I had a little more center of mass, it would have been a little more stable. But nonetheless, it keeps us spin stabilized and pointed in the right direction. Now it's just a matter of going down range and uh, I feel like you can physics warp and it's fine. I feel like the game should understand that. However, I've gotten so many so many times when I physics warp, I feel like I get funky results that differ from the test. And so I found that when it matters to just, uh, rather than physics warps forward, uh, just let the time pass. And as you see in our downrange milestone uh, in the right, we are uh, steadily going up in our downrange distance as opposed to jumping forward uh, over and over again as it struggles to calculate. But with that, as we reach back into the atmosphere, we have passed the 3,000 kilometer downrange. Uh, just barely though, that rocket is not gonna be good enough to handle the five. And as much as I would love to get that 5,000 kilometer downrange uh, into today's episode and complete the entire program uh, in one shot. Unfortunately, we're actually going to have to spend some time on the other program getting the biological experimentation done. We're going to need science and uh, money for that. So as we look into the administration building at our program, we do only have the one contract left plus the, the capstone. Unfortunately, I was hoping to get this done by 1952 was where I was hoping to end today's episode with. So I feel like I'm a little farther on track than I wanted to be but uh, still a lot faster than I've ever been. So, But anyways, that is where I'm going to leave today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward for more RP1. If you did think about subscribing, drop me a like, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.